Welcome. This week we're going to take a look at text comprehension and specifically scaffolding for comprehension with disciplinary text. According to Rosenblatt in 1978, uh, comprehension occurs in the transaction between the reader and the text. And this is going to be important for us because a reader brings much to that literacy event and the text obviously, obviously offers certain features. But meaning is really made during that engagement piece between the reader and that text at that particular moment. Snow confirmed this in 2002 in now which is a commonly understood idea that uh, meaning is constructed by the reader in interaction with the text and the purpose for reading. Seeking to comprehend is an active intentional thinking process through which readers construct meanings. It's the process of simultaneously extracting and constructing meaning through interaction with written language. Uh, the most important uh, thing to think about uh, through this academic lens is that reading is about uh, comprehension. Now many individual reading factors uh, or reader factors that are not within our control, such as cognitive development and culture come into play. However, we teachers, while we can motivate students, we can provide students with interesting texts and allows them choice in reading and writing tasks. Teachers can also provide and promote authentic purposes for engaging in the reading and the writing process that reflect the reading and writing purposes with the texts that occur in our world. Comprehension occurs in that transaction between a reader and a text within a socio-cultural context. As student engagement in subject matter reading is the mediating factor in all of the improvement of student outcomes, that makes the transaction crucial to comprehension and to the reader's role within the transaction important. While students might not necessarily be really, you know, jazzed about the reading or reading texts in your discipline, you can purposefully foster engagement and build self-efficacy. Engagement matters, bottom line. For one, students have the capacity to comprehend more effectively when their need for social interaction and relationships are engaged and honored. That search for meaning is innate. Also, all students have the capacity to comprehend more effectively when their interests and purposes and ideas are engaged and honored. So what are our learning targets today? I can name and describe the comprehension processes characteristic of proficient readers. And two, I can create a text preview to support comprehension. Text previews consist of three paragraphs. Paragraph one is designed to really capture the reader's interest and provide a link between a familiar topic and the topic of the text. We want to be as inclusive as possible here, casting a broad net as, as broadly as possible. <clears throat> we don't want to narrow it down with dichotomous questions, but rather a few rhetorical questions that are really designed to create interest and provide a link between something that's familiar as well as the upcoming selection. We're going to end paragraph one, the connect paragraph, with a question or series of questions that connect to as wide an array as possible as the introductory part of this overview. We're going to end that introductory part with a single question that is designed to elicit four, five, six brief student responses from the question that you choose to make public and move on. Paragraph two of the text preview is the support or meat and potatoes of the paragraph, uh, part of the text preview. For fiction, you'll name the author, provide a description of the characters, the setting, and perhaps the point of view. You're gonna to wanna to complete the core here uh, for fiction by describing the plot up to what seems like a reasonable stopping point. You don't wanna give it away, but you do want to provide a substantial scaffold uh, that does not reveal the outcome. As for expository texts, Name the source and the selection, its location, and the, describe the major points in which they occur. Presley in 2000 and Wharton MacDonald in 1977 did report that consciously thinking about why one is reading a text has shown to increase comprehension. Fortunately for your students, paragraph three, your purpose paragraph, provides just that. Here, give students one or two questions to respond to and let them know ahead of time for what the, it is they will be looking to do as a result of having read the selection. Focus on your higher order thinking skills. For example, analysis, evaluation, synthesis. You've previously provided such a fine base in paragraph two that now you can aim high with your expectations in your purpose paragraph. We know that background knowledge is an important factor uh, that create, helps create meaning. Therefore, teachers should support students' activation of prior knowledge before reading so that information connected with concepts or topics in the text is more easily accessible during reading. To begin the preview, I always read paragraph one, connect to the students, the information that's presented here, so as not to make it a comprehension activity. I then solicit four to five responses, and I move on right after that to paragraph two, support. A variety of elements influence comprehension, as you know. 
from internal cognitive-based factors such as memory and attention to characteristics of the text, such as complexity or sentence structure. The density of new concepts and vocabulary also play large roles. To continue the text preview, I read paragraph two support as well. I want to eliminate the idea that this is a reading comprehension activity. So instead, I will read this to them to provide a scaffold for what they're about to see, including articulating names or difficult places so that when they recognize them in context, they don't internally mispronounce them. Then I move on to paragraph three, the purpose of the reading. That also impacts comprehension. Consider your approach to reading and the resulting comprehension. While enjoying a book outside on the deck is a little different on the weekend as compared to reading a text for graduate class. So to complete the text preview, I read paragraph three, the purpose paragraph allowed to them. I present that to the students so they know for what it is they will be reading. To begin the text preview, I read paragraph one. Connect the information that's presented here to students. I then solicit four to five responses. Then I move on to paragraph two, the support paragraph, for example. Thomas Paine once wrote, what we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. It seems to follow that the tasks we choose to undertake directly reflect that which we value. In light of this line of thinking, what's worth fighting for? To continue the text preview, I read paragraph two, support uh, the information that's presented here to the students, and then I move on to paragraph three, purpose, for example. Abraham Lincoln opens the Gettysburg Address by noting the founding of America on the proposition that all men are created equal. It is in this mindset that Lincoln encourages the continued fight for the unity of the United States of America. To complete the text preview, I read paragraph 3, Purpose. That information is presented here, and I might mention it like this to the students. Please respond to the following. The Gettysburg Address mentions the year 1776. According to Lincoln's speech, why is this year significant to the events described in the speech? What components of the Gettysburg Address reflect the culture of America during Lincoln's presidency? Then, we'll collectively move to analyzing the author's word choices for theme and mood. Now that we've prepared to read the Gettysburg Address, please take a few moments to read this text. You'll see here as word choices pile up, they convey figurative meanings. Consider in which language the text is told. Are the words biblical, apocalyptic, warlike, peaceful? Are they competitive, judgmental, inspiring? Start by looking at the verbs only. How might you categorize these? For example, do these words as a whole stir up some idea, some notion of confidence, dread perhaps, sympathy, apathy? Uh, frustration, optimism, what concepts, or as we talk to the students about these abstract nouns, best represent how these words go together? Consider how these words might be categorized. What concepts or abstract nouns best represent how these go together? Here's another student sample. The student has inferred some concepts, abstract nouns, based on the nouns the author used in the text. As a result, students are now much more able to synthesize the material. They can harness the power of the concepts they've determined that are representative of the text. So they can dive into things such as theme, central idea, mood, tone. They're able to create much more accurate and vivid mental images as a result of the concepts they've attributed to the text. So now let's shift gears. Yes, let's shift gears a little bit now to something more tried and true. You know, think back to those most beloved days when you sat in school and you waited for Mr. Johnson or Miss Anderson, you know, that, that teacher that you had who would say out loud and you looked forward to it every day. Turn to page 168, read the next three pages and write a summary. This is due at the end of the hour. 
Now think about what you would have included in that. There are a lot of components that might be thrown in. How do you decide what to put in? How do you decide what to leave out? Take a few moments now to read, and then write a summary of this text. Reading is what we do to make sense. We examine relevant information. We think about what it might mean. We determine our understanding and we act accordingly. The processes listed here are often referred to as reading strategies. These are the conscious and flexible and nonlinear application of the things that support our construction of meaning from the text. Wolf in 2007 described them as neuronally circuitous. Spit that out in a hurry. It means that there's no order to how this uh, approaches, that proficient readers glean the essence of a text by organizing ideas, by returning to who, what, where, when, why, and moving down to how much they can hold as important while they're taking a look at the images and creating them on their own. It's not linear. They are constantly checking their understanding, engaging their metacognition, and employing these processes to make sense of the world around them. Teachers often assign work such as reading and answering questions about a chapter, distinguishing relevant from extraneous information and word problems, or writing a summary of subject matter material. Such assignments require students to comprehend what they read, no doubt. Student comprehension skills can be improved by explicitly teaching strategies to help them learn such things as activating prior knowledge about a topic or a concept, generating questions about the material in the text, answering different questions and different kinds of questions about the text, synthesizing their learning, really bringing it all together, creating mental images and using graphic organizers to relate information from the text, and monitoring their comprehension, realizing that when they don't understand, they should, they should actually stop and apply a strategy to fix it up and make sure that they do. No doubt reading is a complex task. It involves the orchestration of many interactive processes. These processes cannot be set in motion when any of these comprehension essentials are absent. To paraphrase Snow, Two things stand out about the successful reading of challenging texts. One, we don't proceed strictly from beginning to end. We skim and scan the whole to the start, get into it, move back, prosaically move on prosaically enough, but suddenly read a clause and return to a passage and jump around and back and therefore to a section header and back again a few paragraphs, find some bold-faced words, maybe make a note in the margin, skip to the end and then return to the clause that instigated the whole thing. The author's choices are not the sole input for our comprehension. Readers enhance the author's organizational structure through the work they do on their own, and sometimes that's heavily influenced by the practices of specific domains. Two, the comprehension process requires effort. It can be consciously controlled and be made visible. So, metacognitive teacher-student conversations while reading challenging texts in school can and do address what a text means as well as how to work at comprehending it in general. Background knowledge about content and text relates to the available schema a reader has for a particular text, and that's crucial. Comprehension is also affected by the reader's culture based on the degree to which it matches the cultural content offered in the text. Read this passage through carefully. Consider, though elementary, what skills and knowledge are required by the reader to be able to successfully comprehend it? It's important to consider the reader's individual and unique differences. The characteristics of the context, the features of the text, and what happens when these come together. At a basic level, words and phrases are decoded and represented by mental images. This happens generally rather quickly, automatically, you might say, in our operating memory. And these mental images sort of shift back and forth. They call forth ideas of information that's stored in your long-term memory. And it helps assist readers as they build new connections to things they are representing. These connections occur between the readers and the text and between different parts of the text. This representation is then fine-tuned by the readers as they encounter more information in the text and make additional connections. This allows the reader to exit the transaction with a mental representation of the text. We know the connections readers make lead to mental representations based on the inferences they make when they are based on the details found in the text. 
Readers intentionally engage with the text and ask, what is it I'm looking at here? Readers search for coherence and a chain of related events that can lead them as they infer and make an effort to synthesize a text's meaning. Again, as they move through the text, they continue to build and say, what is it I'm looking at here? There are two key standards that speak to this, our reading anchor standards one and two. One, read closely, determine what the text says explicitly to make logical inferences from it. And two, determine the central ideas or themes of the text. Struggling readers may not be intentionally striving to be successful, but there's little doubt that everyone will struggle to make sense of a text given the correct one. We must diligently work to make texts as accessible as possible and foster meaning making from them. This access is made possible through scaffolding, a term Graves and Graves 2003 further defined as that which helps students complete tasks they otherwise could not complete. See also Vygotsky 1978 and the ZPD. This aids students by helping them to better complete a task, to complete a task with maybe less stress or in less time, or learn more fully than they otherwise would have. Comprehension is a process, a process of constructing a supportable understanding of the text. So let's be intentional about what we would like students to do with it. Then let's tell them ahead of time explicitly what they will encounter in the text and what we expect them to do as a result of having read it. As you can see here, there are a number of reasons to use a text preview. A few of these include student engagement, a robust exploration of the text, support for struggling readers, a provision of knowledgeable approaches to the text, and support for their construction of meaning. Activating relevant prior knowledge has also been shown to improve both understanding and recall. Use what is read in this Connect paragraph to engage students and access what they already know to provide a means by which to connect the new information to be learned. Here's an example of a connection paragraph for the short story Priscilla and the Wimps. Here's an example of a connection paragraph for thermoregulation from an AP Biology textbook. As you will with the connect and purpose paragraphs, read this information aloud to the students. Model fluency, your rate, accuracy, prosody, as you introduce students uh, to the text's contents. Here's an example of a support paragraph for Priscilla and the Wimps. Here is an example of a support paragraph for thermal regulation. Now read the purpose paragraph, the information that tells the students, here is the corresponding text on what we are going to be doing as a result of having read it. Here is a purpose paragraph for Priscilla and the Wimps. And here is a purpose paragraph for thermoregulation. Comprehension is the process of constructing a supportable understanding of a text. So again, let's be intentional about what we want them to do with it. Let's tell them ahead of time. Let's be explicit. Then let's scaffold, provide a higher level purpose so that students meaningfully engage with the text. Mm -hmm.